This room gets such nice sunlight, doesn't it? Perfect for my room, right? Yeah, and it even faces the garden, nice. Guided by the sales agent, Ms. Mary Johnson, my husband and I, along with my mother-in-law, were looking at a newly built house for sale. It's been two years since we got married. We decided to check out several houses for sale near the station, having saved up to buy a home. My husband and mother-in-law seem to really like this new property with its many rooms. Please feel free to check out the second floor too. As the three of us started heading towards the stairs, Ms. Johnson grabbed my arm. She then said, can I have a word with you, and took me outside. After a deep breath, she spoke earnestly. I'll get straight to the point. Your husband, he's having an affair. Hearing this shocking truth, my world went dark. The sound of my shattered trust echoed loudly in my head. Thank you. I'm glad you're our agent. Could you help me out a bit? First things first, I need to investigate my husband. I'll gather evidence and bring down my traitorous husband. I'm Aria Davis, 41. A working housewife in my second year of marriage. Approaching my 40s and earning a decent salary in sales, I wasn't too interested in marriage. Maybe because many of my friends were enjoying their single lives. My husband, Owen, five years my junior, was a colleague from the same company and a drinking buddy for about four years. In our company, we had a close-knit group of drinking friends from various departments and ages, meeting several times a week for meals and drinks. What do you do on your days off, Arya? I'm into movies, so I'm usually watching them at home or hitting the theaters. I even visit filming locations of my favorite movies. That's a cool hobby. I love old toys and spend my weekends antique shopping. Finding a tin robot or something, that's just the best. Our hobbies were different, but both my husband Owen and I cherished our alone time. We really clicked in that we didn't conform to others outside of work and prioritized ourselves. Once, Owen invited me out for drinks to discuss something. Aria, would you consider dating me, with marriage in mind? I feel like with you, we could both respect each other and enjoy life. Really? I mean, I do feel we share similar values, but you know I'm five years older, right? Owen said he never felt the age difference, and like me, he wanted to respect each other's hobbies and didn't want kids. Every time someone asked me about marriage, I'd say, I'd consider it if having kids wasn't a requirement. I'm not ready to be a parent myself, so no kids for me. But having a life partner would definitely be more fun, right? I already had a good impression of Owen, and his perspective wasn't bad. So, we tried dating, and it was surprisingly comfortable with just the right amount of space. Pressured by Owen and our drinking buddies, we got married six months later. I lost my mother in my twenties, and my father two years before our marriage, so there was no one to oppose it. Owen always said, my family is fine with it, but his mother wasn't too pleased with me being five years older and not wanting kids. At your age and not even planning to have kids. At our first meeting, mother-in-law was quite outspoken, which honestly surprised me. I was honestly surprised. I thought my husband had talked to her and that she was okay with it. In contrast, my father-in-law was truly happy about our marriage. My wife and I have been separated for a year due to some reasons. So, don't mind what she says and just be happy together. His words were a relief, especially after my mother-in-law's remarks. It seemed his parents always had different values and often argued, and last year, he finally declared he wanted a divorce. But when his wife begged, they avoided divorce by separating, with him paying for two households. After the meeting ended and it was just the two of us, my husband Owen looked apologetic. Sorry about that. My mom's saying things like that. But, I guess I'll have to take care of her eventually. Dad seems to have had enough. Yeah, being the eldest son and all. Indeed, considering age and income, it seemed likely that the burden of care would fall on my mother-in-law. With a slight unease, we began our married life. After getting married, we started living in Owen's apartment. He had a dream of buying a house and creating a room for his collection, 
so we wanted to save up for a down payment. My husband apartment was very close to mother-in-law S. Welcome home. Let's have dinner together. The day after we started living together, I came home to find my mother-in-law waiting at our door. You're my daughter-in-law now. You better start learning how to be a good one. Get started on dinner, will you? Huh? Daughter-in-law training. I felt oddly nervous about this concept of daughter-in-law training. But every day, she came to our house, ate the dinner I made, used our bath, and then left. The training involved complaints about my cooking and housekeeping, annoying remarks like don't you want kids, or you can't do much for your age, can you? Was enduring such treatment supposed to be part of daughter-in-law training? Hey, can you tell your mom to stop coming over every day? While it wasn't anything major, this daily routine was taking a toll on me mentally. Just seeing mother-in-law waiting at the front door was disheartening. Since she's been alone after separating from dad, maybe she's just happy to have someone to talk to? Even seeing me distressed, Owen just smirked. Then you should be her conversation partner. Why do I have to come home tired and take care of your energetic mom? You said it was daughter-in-law training, right? I'm an only child, so I'm thinking of living with mom eventually. I want you to get used to it now. What? It seemed that when Owen said he'd have to take care of her, he meant living together. I felt a bit deceived, but after calming down, I thought maybe it was inevitable. So, it seemed wiser to get along with my mother-in-law. I switched to mostly just agreeing with her, but that might have encouraged her. I have plans for a drink tomorrow, so please have your meal at home. What? You're going to leave me to eat alone? Then give me some money for dinner. It's the least you could do. All right, I understand. Since you're not having kids, you should at least take good care of me. It felt more like I had become my mother-in-law's personal caretaker than undergoing daughter-in-law training. Lately, if I came home late, she would call repeatedly, and if I said I had plans, she'd ask for dinner money. I tried to get along with mother-in-law, but it only made her more presumptuous. When I vented my frustrations and anger to Owen, he'd say, sorry, I'll talk to my mom, but it didn't seem to have much effect. One day, I decided to confront mother-in-law directly. I'm done with this daughter-in-law training. It's a bother having you over every day, so can you stop, please? And why do you need to come over so often anyway? Surprised by my blunt words, mother-in-law looked shocked. I braced for a retort, but she just shrugged and pouted. What can I do? Your father only pays for rent, so I don't have much money. My part-time job doesn't pay much. Don't be so stingy about a meal and a bath. I felt like I'd been let down. My mother-in-law worked part-time, and my father-in-law covered her rent. I thought she could manage her finances just fine, but she had a penchant for fashion. She often bragged to me about her expensive clothes and shoes. Oh, I see. So you were coming over to save on food and utility bills. I was utterly astounded. She had been simply using our place for her convenience. It would have been better if she had been upfront from the start, but even then, it was a nuisance. Please stop this. If you continue being selfish, I'll talk to my husband about moving far away. Heh, you sure know how to talk for a 40-year-old. How about we make a deal? In exchange for not coming over, you secretly give me some money without telling Owen. My mother-in-law's request was $1,000 a month. It seemed a small price to pay for peace. I thought of it as just starting to help out earlier than expected. After that, I got the marriage life I had always dreamed of. My relationship with my mother-in-law improved, and we would go out for meals together once a month. This was the perfect balance. What did you say to mom? Our relationship has improved a lot, and leaving it to you was definitely the right choice. We just had a good talk. I had bought daily peace with money. With my mother-in-law no longer coming over, Owen seemed more relaxed and even started going out for drinks on weekdays with friends other than his work buddies. On weekends, we each did our own thing and went out to eat together when convenient. It seemed like there was nothing out of the ordinary, just peaceful and happy days. 
Little did I know, an unbelievable plan was being hatched behind my back. Nearly two years into our marriage, Owen suddenly suggested looking at houses. There were several for sale near a station two stops away. A friend told me about them, and they were really nice. Let's take mom and go see them together next time. Your mom too? Yeah, there are houses with spacious layouts, and it seems we can still choose. Plus, all the houses are stylishly designed. Owen continued excitedly, apparently very taken with the idea. Indeed, the convenience was great, the houses were new and stylish, and the prices were not out of reach. I'll take out a mortgage and make the payments, so could you use what you've saved up for the down payment, Aria? You said before that if you bought a house, you'd want to pay about a third of it as a down payment, right? Did I say that? It depends on the price, but yeah, if we really decide to buy, I'd like to contribute a significant amount. All right, then let's go see them on our next day off. Eager to move forward, Owen called his mother right away, and we arranged to go out all three of us that weekend. Come to think of it, it was about three or four years ago, when Owen had just joined our circle of drinking friends, we had indeed talked about buying a home. At that time, Owen had a girlfriend he was thinking of marrying and was advised against taking out a full loan without a down payment. We got into a lively discussion about how each of us would buy a house. Yeah, I think I'd want to put down about a third of the purchase price as a down payment. Oh, but if I were living alone, maybe buying an affordable used condo outright could be an option. He remembered well something I had said casually in the moment. I never talked about my savings, but I wasn't opposed to considering it, depending on the price. If Owen was taking on the remaining payments, that might be a good idea. Anyway, touring properties sounded fun, so I was getting excited. We made a reservation online and went to the housing complex with his mother on the day. The sales agent guiding us around the venue seemed to have a moment of surprise when she saw my husband and me, her eyes widening as if she recognized us, but she quickly composed herself and greeted us. Hello, I'm Mary Johnson, your agent for today. Please let me know how I can help you. We'd like to start with houses that have more rooms. You have ones with at least four bedrooms, right? Yes, we do. Let's start there. Owen was particular about having more rooms because he wanted his own collection room and to have separate living spaces for his mother and us. His main concern was having an independent room on the first floor. The first property we entered, the one with the most rooms, seemed to catch both Owen's and his mother's fancy. It had an additional room following the living room, and one more separate Japanese-style room. This room gets such nice sunlight, doesn't it? Perfect for my room, right? Yeah, and it even faces the garden, nice. The garden wasn't very large, but opening the windows revealed a lawn that gave a sense of openness. Though slightly over budget, it was not a bad candidate. Please feel free to check out the second floor too. As the three of us began heading towards the stairs, Ms. Ms. Johnson took my arm. She said, can I talk to you for a moment, and led me outside. Excuse me, but weren't you in the volleyball team at T Middle School, Ms. Smith? Excuse me? Yes, Smith was my maiden name. My maiden name was Martinez. Don't you remember? Wait, Mary? The small and cute Mary? The sales agent turned out to be a junior from my middle school days. We went to different high schools, so it had been a whopping 28 years since we last met. Her eyes, which crinkled when she smiled, hadn't changed, but her once skinny frame had filled out. I probably wouldn't have recognized her if she hadn't spoken to me. Above all, I was impressed by her age-appropriate composure and her professional demeanor. She took a deep breath and spoke earnestly. I'll get straight to the point. Your husband, he's having an affair. I burst out laughing at first. But she wasn't laughing, she had a serious expression on her face. It didn't seem like a joke. What do you mean? This is the first time you've met my husband, right? No, he came here a few days ago. Oh, that's right, he did mention something like that. That explains why she looked surprised at first. Your husband came here a few days ago with a young woman. They were looking for a house to live in together, and I was the one showing them around. 
He probably doesn't remember me. It's typical of him. My husband usually doesn't remember people like shop clerks or others with whom he has a temporary interaction. Unless it's a contract or something, he probably wouldn't remember her. Actually, your husband and that woman also liked this house. He said if they could somehow manage the down payment, they could afford the payments. Aren't you supposed to be paying the down payment? Excuse me? Hearing the shocking truth, everything went dark before my eyes. The sound of my shattered trust echoed loudly in my head. No way, can't be. I was shocked not only that my husband had an affair, but also that he intended to make me pay the down payment for a better house than he could afford on his own. I had thought all this time since our marriage that we respected each other's time for hobbies, but was he nurturing love with another woman during that time? And was he planning to live with his mistress in this house after buying it? If I paid a third of the price as down payment, as Owen suggested, the monthly mortgage payments would be significantly easier. Maybe once the contract is signed, I might just be discarded. Calm down, nothing is confirmed yet. I told myself, taking deep breaths. First things first, I need to investigate my husband. Thank you. I'm glad you're our agent. Could you help me out a bit? We quickly exchanged contact information and returned to Owen and his mother. We continued to tour other properties, but I remember nothing. My mind was in turmoil, not knowing whether to trust my husband or if I was being betrayed. Back at home, Owen insisted on buying that first house we saw. Aria, how much can you contribute for the down payment? A third would be about $300,000. No, I don't have that much. Maybe up to $200,000. Come on, you have your father's inheritance, right? Excuse me? I was taken aback. My father's inheritance? Why would he bring that up? It made no sense. It was a rumor at the office. Aria, you inherited a huge fortune from your father. It would be much easier if you paid half. Ah, indeed, a few years ago, after my father passed away, such rumors had amusingly spread around the office. Could that have been his motive? Even if we decide, I want to take another one or two looks, thinking of living there. We also need to consider buying new furniture and appliances. Yeah, we'd want to buy new furniture to match that house. Let's go again next weekend. I don't want someone else to get it, so let's bring a deposit just in case. It seemed in Owen and his mistress's minds, that house was already decided. If this is true, I'll gather evidence and bring my husband down to hell. I took a half day off the next day and visited a detective agency that could respond immediately. I suspected something might happen this week. Owen didn't even bother to hide his tracks, and by the next day, I was able to identify his mistress. He had been spending his lunch breaks at her place during his daily sales rounds. On days he didn't go out for drinks after work, he would return to her apartment. The cunning part about Owen was that he spent half the week going out for drinks or meals with me. I felt like crying at my own naivety for believing his words about going out with friends. On Wednesday night, I received a message from Mary. Your husband has booked for another viewing on Friday and Sunday. Isn't he coming with his mistress on one of those days? Our agreement was for Sunday. Like last time, he's going first with his mistress. The feeling of betrayal and disbelief made my chest heavy. I felt a mix of unbearable anger and disbelief, leaving a heavy, unsettled feeling in my chest. For now, I informed my father-in-law over the phone that I was considering divorce. It would be better to tell my mother-in-law after everything was decided. I'm really sorry for my foolish son. If you're planning to confront them on Friday, I'll join you. It's not fair to be two against one. His words were comforting, and I decided to let her father scold her in front of the mistress. Then came the decisive Friday. I met my father-in-law at an old coffee shop near the station after work. As we walked towards the housing complex, Mary called. He's arrived, but your mother-in-law is with them. My mother-in-law too? Yes, she was introduced as the lady's sister just now. I was speechless. What does this mean? Why are the three of them together? How long had my mother-in-law known about Owen's affair? My mind was swirling with questions. 
my father-in-law was next to me, holding his head in his hands. I was really glad he came with me today. We quickened our pace towards the property, exchanging glances. Quietly opening the door, my father-in-law and I searched for them. We heard their cheerful voices coming from the living room. Someday, we'll spend time here with our grandchildren. I'm looking forward to it. Those words hit me like a punch. Was the real reason Owen wanted a house with more rooms to ensure a space for children? I gathered myself and entered the living room. Though I had braced myself, seeing Owen with another woman was still a shock. Owen, what is this? Who is this woman? I couldn't hide my anger as I glared at him. Before Owen could respond, my father-in-law's angry shout filled the room. Owen! Abigail! What are you two planning? Who is this woman? Speak up! Owen jumped in surprise, uttering a yelp when he saw me and my father-in-law. My mother-in-law trembled, then collapsed to the floor, looking up at us. You! And Arya, why are you here? Owen must not have expected his affair to be discovered. Nor could he have imagined being confronted with both his mother-in-law and mistress present. Sorry, ma'am, I told your husband that you were here with your family. His sister, right? Mary's superb acting impressed me even in such a situation. Owen and his mother-in-law just hung their heads, saying nothing. You were planning to make me pay for this house's down payment and then discard me, weren't you? To get the house in your name and pay off the rest of the mortgage. That woman there, she's Eleanor, the one you were previously thinking of marrying, right? How do you know all this? I hired a detective agency. They recorded your unbelievable conversation with her. We should have had this conversation at home. I played the recording from a family restaurant conversation for everyone. It contained Owen's despicable words, sorry for making you wait two years. Once she pays the down payment, I'll tell her I want kids and get a divorce. She's too nice, so she'll probably step aside. I can't let go of my mom, she's my cash cow, but if she becomes too much to handle, I'll put her in a facility. Hearing this, my mother-in-law, who had been sitting on the floor, looked up. Cash cow? Were you planning to take my part-time earnings once we lived together? My father-in-law answered for my silent husband. No, I was paying Owen to take care of you. If you ever ran into financial trouble, he was supposed to help out with the extra $1,000 a month I sent along with the rent. What? I never heard of this, nor received any money. So, you were saving it for me? Owen began to sweat profusely. Uh, well, that was... Wait, the $1,000 you've been giving me for saving up to buy a house. My father-in-law sighed deeply, deeply disappointed. So you were the one misusing the money, not your mother. Shocked, my father-in-law fell silent. In the meantime, I asked my mother-in-law something I had been wondering. When did mother-in-law join forces with the two of them? Recalling the days of daughter-in-law training, it seemed unlikely she had been deceiving me from the start. Not long ago, Owen told me to cooperate for the sake of a house and grandchildren. I'm sorry, so sorry. My mother-in-law trembled, seemingly frightened by my father-in-law's gaze. You, Owen, have been making Arya send you money. I'm fed up with your reckless spending and lack of common sense. I won't show any more mercy. This time it's divorce for sure. Please don't leave me. My mother-in-law cried out, looking as if her lifeline had been cut. Ignoring her, my father-in-law confronted Owen. Maybe he knew something like this would happen and came with me. You turned out to be worse than her. I'm disappointed. I'm cutting ties with you both. I want nothing more to do with you. His angry voice echoed through the new house. I almost felt sorry that our negative energy might linger in this house. No, Dad, it's a misunderstanding. Owen tried to make excuses, but I was reaching my limit. Grateful to Mary for tactfully leaving the room, I knew I had to end this debacle quickly. Enough. When did you start planning all this? I have plenty of evidence of your affair, so don't think you can escape. I confronted Owen. Then Eleanor, his mistress, 
who had been watching us with annoyance, smirked and spoke up. Ah, just tell her. We've been using you for our happy marriage. You're single and rich, right? Since Owen gave you such a nice dream, just pay the down payment, will you? So, my marriage to you was part of your plan? Did you really think Owen would seriously fall for an old woman who can't even have kids? Poor you. My fists clenched. I couldn't forgive Eleanor, who was smirking as if she was watching from a higher ground. I couldn't stand being ridiculed by such a woman. You talk about me as if I'm a loser, but are you okay? I'll be claiming alimony from you too. What? I can't pay. Well then, maybe your future husband Owen can. Eleanor looked at Owen in surprise. I took the opportunity to address Owen. Owen, I'm divorcing you. I'll be claiming $100,000 in alimony from the two of you, so sadly you'll never be able to buy a house. What? I had a fairly enjoyable marriage, but for you, it was just a waste of time and money. By the way, I've already consulted with our colleagues at the office. Owen's face turned pale. He probably thought I would quit my job after the divorce. Wait. We had a good two years, right? Please, no alimony. Owen desperately begged, kneeling down. Your collection at home might fetch some money. My husband's expression suddenly turned startled, and he began to apologize. Please, not that, forgive me. No matter what Owen did or said, I felt nothing. Eleanor, now on the losing end, pouted. So, I had to say a word or two to Eleanor as well. You too, Eleanor. It's sad you waited two years only to end up paying alimony. Maybe you'll be happy with penniless Owen. If you can. What? What are you going to do? Eleanor's face turned red as she lunged at Owen. As the two of them started their lover's quarrel, I had one last thing to say to my mother-in-law. Speaking slowly and loudly as if to a child. You'll hear from my lawyer about what happens next. Also, the money you've been sending to your mother ends now. From next month, Owen will have to support you. My father-in-law and I left the arguing trio behind and walked out with a sense of relief. Needless to say, we headed straight to a pub near the station and raised a toast to celebrate. Afterwards, I got the lawyers to claim alimony from Owen and Eleanor, and surprisingly, the divorce was settled smoothly. Owen apologized multiple times, but I couldn't forgive him. The affair, naturally, became a topic at the office, and Owen, feeling uncomfortable, quit his job. I thought Owen and Eleanor would finally get married, but their relationship ended anticlimactically. Eleanor probably didn't want to wait another two years. It turned out Eleanor was already seeing someone else. After berating Owen, she left him, only to be dumped by her other partner when he found out about the alimony claim. It really was a case of much ado about nothing, or however you might call it. My mother-in-law, faced with divorce from my father-in-law, couldn't pay the rent anymore and moved into Owen's apartment. My father-in-law had already moved far away and cut off all contact with them. It's uncertain how long my spendthrift mother-in-law and jobless Owen can stay in that apartment. I used the alimony from both of them and my savings to buy a two-bedroom apartment outright. Of course, a property recommended by Mary's company. With my father's modest inheritance, I can live comfortably even after retiring. For now, I'm not interested in love or marriage, but marriage wasn't as bad as I imagined. So, maybe one day I'll meet a partner who truly loves me and wants to share life with me.